I don't know. It looks like a lot of behemoths are totally dead here. Genesis! Looks a little framey, but, um, I mean, hopefully, eventually, they'll do a PC release. I, I really hope that Square Enix has learned that, um, this should not just be on mobile. It absolutely should be released on Steam. And this right here, this is the uh, First Soldier story content. So if you missed uh, First Soldier, then good news, you'll be able to get it. Yeah, I mean, like, there, there's no reason to not put this on Steam. Don't know who the dude with the axe is. I think he's supposed to be one of the First Soldier guys. But uh, again, um, first soldier is dead now. So uh, let's let's go through that again with a finer tooth, uh, fine tooth comb, shall we? It's not snow. It's almost certain. I think it's almost certainly one of the uh, characters uh, that we see from first soldier. But uh, it's also supposed to be Sephiroth in the past, so that would make more sense. Uh, this, I mean, this is. This is, this is what I think pretty much everybody wanted from, like, an FF7, like, better remaster sort of thing, where it's, like, but like brand new character models, brand new environments, and everything that looks like, just like the original game. Uh, that looks like this to a T. I mean, this Ever Crisis is, is really starting to look like just exactly what people were wanting in terms of, like, the remaster so good stuff good text boxes uh there from what i can tell there's going to be like this for like every single ff7 compilation that has come out like we have uh ff or we got um crisis core here and we got F the original ff7 on display but i imagine they'll also do dirge eventually too which yes please so new outfit for zach doesn't seem like anything's really changed. By the way, this is, uh, to my knowledge, it's supposed to be turn-based. Uh, um, level 20 behemoth. Detail on it is using, like, a lot of, like, in the actual battles that you have to fight. Uh, it goes into, like, using, like, FF7 remake-style character models and everything. Tifa with a monk outfit. Yeah, that looks awesome, man. Giving me some lease from Final Fantasy XIV vibes. Aerith in, like, Genesis armor. Uh, is there anything to really pick up on here? HP is around 700 for all the characters. This is interesting because it looks... It, it's in the sector area, right? Uh, it's in one of the um, beneath-the-plate areas. But it Barrett's there, too, so I'm guessing that this would be more of a challenge-based thing. Actually, I'm digging the costumes. I don't know if anybody else out there is digging the costumes, but oh my goodness. Can you imagine bridal costumes? How much those will sell? Probably fun the next part of FF7 Remake by itself. Uh, I recognize that sword as one of Cloud's one of them. Horse Stealer? All right, uh, so this is the main content. So interesting that there is a tab for solo means that there's probably also a tab for multi daily quests, which apparently can be completed. 
uh, enhance quests, which I'm guessing just is training characters. Summon quests must be to get summons and espers. Battle tower. Sealed tower of the Cetra, so the ancients. Take on special battles to obtain character memories. Hmm. I wonder if that's where you get the story. Like, you need to play through the battle tower. Well, there's all, it also says there's story quests, so I'm curious what the actual character memories are and how that differentiates. Dungeons as well. There's the draw, party, enhance, and growth. I also like the look of the tower because if you look at the tower, it's got an interesting design. And with um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I wonder if that's related to it at all. Because that artwork certainly don't remember anything from Crisis Core, Advent Children, Dirge, original FF7, that match what that looks like it could be just original but maybe not first four fifth floor looks like there's a boss icon there common enemies which is an interesting thing are there uncommon enemies recommended power twenty thousand. character shards I mean, probably how you level up your characters Nope, uh, go back. I wanted to see that some more. Summon stream, Ifrit, charge speed, and strength. So espers have a certain amount of time to actually charge them up, maybe. And two abilities, each with their own speed as well. L pack. Or packed L ability. Radiant plume, change speed, 800% fire, elemental, physical, and magical damage to one enemy. Packed missions, clear trial of Ifrit on normal one time. Consume 500 stamina in any enhancement quest. Hmm. So, a couple of different ways to actually improve Ifrit. So, this must be a summon improvement stream. Or, like, how you level up your Esper. If for it, nodes unlocked, zero out of a hundred and six. Urge speed and strength seems to be the only two things with Espers on any screens. Hellfire is written down there, so it does have Hellfire. 106 nodes. Ooh. I guess if I guess espers are going to have some uh, building. All right, so this is what you were wondering about. So these are the first soldier characters. Matt, Glenn, and Lucia. So if you look there, you see that weapon? That's why I assume that Sephiroth is fighting Glenn at the end of this trailer, because of the weapons match. He also got a dog. And possibly a Final Fantasy VIII character. Yeah, the battle axe, it ha it almost ha certainly has to be Glenn. I don't know, it looks good, man. If, if nothing, weird to see an axe with Materia in it. I mean, yeah, there's no Final Fantasy VII character that uses 
an axe to my memory. I mean, maybe there's a boss, but there, like, yeah, axe. I mean, this eh, it makes them unique, right? And yeah, of course, it's like FF7 world, right? Uh, the first class game, you put materia in your weapon, so kind of, kind of neat, kind of neat. But yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for it. I, I I'll play it if I, especially when it actually comes out. For right now, <laughs> got to see if I can get into the beta. All right, let's take a look at the big one, shall we? This was definitely the hugest thing. I can't believe this is going to be out in less than a year. Just look at it all. It's so green. Even after everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. It looks like it's running at 60 FPS too. But in reality, it's barely hanging on. So smooth. I was wondering, what's Cloud been doing these past 5 years? Where's he? Hi, Alien. It's a good day, man. This is gonna sound crazy, but as far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. This is the brand new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer. It is the very essence of our star. Boogadin, boogadin, boogadin. Coursing through its planetary veins. Aww. Well, we already went over Ever Crisis, so you're just gonna have to deal with uh... shadows of the man. Sephiroth was in Midgard. We fought him. Maybe it may Whatever happened, he's alive. But why come back now? Uh, 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 w w w w watching it for the first time, we'll go through this with a fine tooth comb afterwards. Well, now, I think we woke it up. I mean, this trailer is just beautiful. I mean. The, I, I can't believe I'm, like, within a year's time, I'm going to get Final Fantasy 16. And this. It's just... It's a really good time to be a Final Fantasy person. I mean, this is just so hype. The double attacks, man. That Tifa and Aerith one, the Yuffie and Red 13. They say she's a monster. That she can peer inside you. Into the very depths of your soul. That she can become those you hate, those you fear, those you love. Three, you, yeah. You murdered my dad. Now that's ever crisis. That's definite. NFTs is definitely ever crisis. You know that I killed her. So, who is she? And. All right, can we talk about the first thing? Two discs. Two discs. This... Two discs. This is going to be an absolute massive son of a bitch of a game. And what a clever marketing thing. You know, first off, the fact that it's two discs harkens back to the original Final Fantasy VII, right? Like, that was the that was really the era of like multiple disc games and the fact that we're kind of there and and here's the thing we live in a digital era oh yes we'll talk about all of that Ilian. but i want to put like we live in a digital era where 
like recently some games have been coming out and it's just like there's nothing on the disc it's just a code and you just download the game and everybody gets really angry about that right the fact that square enix did such a baller move of just being like yeah no it's there's two discs you get the two di you get like the full game there yeah patches sure not much you can do about that in the modern day but the fact that like they were just like yeah we're gonna do two discs this stands out so much from a lot of other games like this is a statement of being like two discs nobody else has done that really yet in this generation i oh no no i think maybe no no that's not true um horizon uh forbidden west did it but i don't think they advertised it i think it's just a really cool thing because i i've seen a lot of reaction videos today to this trailer and something that everybody is talking about is two discs and you know what what a clever marketing thing it's so simple it's so easy but it really is just a bold ass statement of saying yeah our game is fucking huge but you're gonna get everything on the discs when you buy it just really really good marketing 13 oh yeah 13 was but i wouldn't i'd say it wasn't the rule like ps3 and ps3 and um xbox 360 days it was it felt to me i don't remember that many maybe my i just didn't play those games i remember star ocean 4 and yeah final fantasy 13 on 360 was but like e even during like the ps3 days like it was kind of a joke of multi-disc like metal gear solid 4 made fun of that of swapping discs so yeah it, it kind of disappeared for a while and now that it's come like feels cool feels cool here feels cool sephiroth says she, she can be anyone someone you love and i killed her back then so you know she, i i think it's i think that that's just messing with people's expectations the the thing is is that all right so this is we'll talk about this first the thing that sephiroth says right at the end there when he slashes tifa so if you've played the original game spoilers for the 20 year old game not for the new one haha <laughs> elder no no it's all coming out next early next year man we're going to be playing all of part two now part three yes that's going to be down the line but anyway if you know this what happens here sephiroth basically in like almost kills tifa but after he slashes tifa through the stomach uh cloud kind of rescues her a little bit and tifa's martial art master finds her picks her up takes her and helps her like recover kind of thing right so sephiroth when he slashes her basically thinks that he did kill her but as it turns out that wasn't true because Sephiroth goes into the next room after this to be with Genova and then Zack fights him and then Cloud kind of beats him throws him into the life stream and he gets so the idea here that Sephiroth being like who is she kind of thing feels like a total misdirect because barring the fact that this is like messing with us and really making us overthink things I think it's quite simply just he's just trying to screw with Cloud, which, yeah, that's kind of his M.O. I don't think that there's anything particularly. Um, I killed her. Oops. Oh, my mouse was on the wrong screen. Um, I don't think that there's anything particularly. Like. Mischievous about this. I don't know. All right, so let's get him back to the start and look at the rest. Oh, oh, definitely. And, and I, I do think it's going to be one of those things that's going to probably not make a ton of sense to us. 
until we get the game and play it, right? Like, if you think about the first game remake when it came out and we saw the ghosts and everybody thought, oh, are those the spirits of the ancients kind of thing? Are those the, like, are those this? Are those that kind of thing? And, and, and now we look back on it and it's like, oh, those are arbiters of fate. Those are what's keeping the, the story in the original plot lane so that nothing can change. Now that those are gone, the future games can be vastly different if they wanted to be, but they're probably not going to be that different because we see a ton of old locations and whatnot. And the story will say probably mostly the same. I don't know. I don't know what I want to happen this time around. I think I'm just here for the ride, Elian. I think I'm done trying to like, it's going to be like this. It's gonna, I want it to be like this. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. Right? Because I'm enjoying the ride so far. It's a good ride. And yeah. In the final three Arbiters, the spirits of Kadaj and Co. Yeah, yeah. They Well, <laughs> It's not necessarily Kadaj and them. They would still theoretically exist anyway. Um, but so much, I think the whispers are like calling forth that kind of spirit of Kadaj and friends. But yeah, they're directly, if you look at their designs and everything, it's way too like matchy to them it's it's almost yeah it's definitely like referencing those three but is it specifically those three no because the the whispers there was nothing in the whispers that said that they could be a person right like they weren't it's not like they would guide people to their fate but they would not become people they they would not like take the role of somebody um at least that's my interpretation of it we, we never saw anything that said that the arbiters were characters from the ff7 universe they just kept everything on track sort of thing all right well, let's talk about this of this terrible disaster caused by a massive tornado which swept through sector zero one and two Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are already in progress. First off, this first little bit here is, inter is very interesting. This, to me, is more interesting than the end little bit about talking about, is Tifa real? Uh, it feels too much like a misdirect to me on that one. This one I find is more interesting because they talk about a tornado which was has something... To, uh, it's supposed to be, I think, like a reference to the end of FF7 Remake where you fight Sephiroth and there's like that tornado that's like ripping apart Midgar and everything. Uh, that feels what it's kind of like here. It's also interesting that there's no... There's... There, it's... Like, all the Avalanche people, they're not necessarily dead. They look really fucking beat up. But they're not dead. That's very curious. Because... Is this the Shinra, like, getting them out of there kind of thing? Is this Shinra, like, capturing them? Or is this Shinra um helping them in a way like mm, i don't know this is me overthinking this is the part of the trailer i'm overthinking because this is not the we beat the whispers thing this seems like a they failed kind of alternate timeline and people have said this is supposed to be like maybe the zach timeline you know where zach survives uh, because he goes back to the church and there's a bunch of people there that look like they've been through something really devastating. So is the is there going to be like part of Rebirth where it's Zach trying to rescue these guys and, and Aerith 
uh, like Aerith, and then he inadvertently rescues these like Tifa and whatnot. And then what happened to Cloud is the other thing, because Cloud's not seen here. It, we see another part later in the trailer where it's like Cloud is in the northern crater and heading towards the reunion. So did all four of these characters get captured by Shinra, are going to meet up with Zack, and Cloud went off with Sephiroth? Mm -mm. I mean, it, it would be really, really shocking. Like, even if this is a different timeline, Zero, one, and two. this would be really shocking if they were all just dead at this point. It, it, it also feels interesting, like, the way that they show the characters, too. Again, reading way too much into this, but... Like there, it shows them like loading and moving all of these characters on. But then, like Aerith is just like a kind of more brief instant. Zach is carrying Cloud to Midgar. Yeah, which I don't even know. I I don't even know. But like Zach also. It's weird, right? Because like trying to figure it out is just mind bending at this point. This is like I said, this is something that's going to make more sense once we play it, obviously, and we have the answers. But uh, this this part to me is super confusing and I'm really, really, really curious. This is the part of the trailer I think I'm the most curious about. I know a lot of people are curious about the end, but I'm super fucking curious about this. All right. Wow. Just look at it all. It's so green. Even after every It's so beautiful. I love that there's color. I love that there's these structures here, like these windmills things. Like these are cool, man. Um I assume that's calm. Because I kind of see the uh, the water wheel, which for whatever reason, or th I don't remember the windmills in Calm, but I do remember kind of like a wheel sort of thing. So that that might be Calm. I, I kind of like the alternate height of a lot of the open world stuff. I do think that this is didn't they say Unreal Five as well? I um. I would assume that it's probably Unreal 5. It looks really good. It looks better than Remake did. And uh, that's saying something. Like, it also looks really, really smooth. I assume this is running on a super high-end PC. But this looks super smooth frame rate-wise so far. I'm not Digital Foundry, so I can't tell. But, like, I assume that the areas are vastly wide. But everybody keeps saying that FF7 is an open world game, which has never been true. It's a on rails uh, with like when you're on the world map, you're still limited. Oh, Jeff said it was UE5. OK, then it's UE5. That's fine. I, it doesn't surprise me because at this point, everyone's going to shift over, start shifting to UE5. Thank you, Elliam. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. FF7 really wasn't open world until incredibly later when you got an airship. Mostly everything on the open world just kind of looked, or when you were on the world map, felt a little more open because you could wander around and whatnot. Uh, that's what I assume this is. Uh, I don't think that it's, like, crazy super big. I don't think it's, like, sandbox big because it just doesn't quite work with the scale and everything and the detail on this. But I assume that the areas are super fucking huge. Oh, I'm going to talk about that because I think we actually do have the answer in this video. I actually think there's a couple of interesting things to do with that. But it may look that way, but in reality, it's barely hanging on. Looks gorgeous, man. I was wondering, what's 
Philip been doing these past five years? Where's he been? Like the like the wildlife too. Like the non monster wildlife. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I clicked. I misclicked. This is gonna sound Chocobo Farm. Chocobo Billy. I heard someone say Chocobo breeding. That's something interesting that we're going to talk about in a second here. Yo, Zenmoto, what's up, man? Hope you're having a good day. Gold Chocobo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have to go back and finish your hard mode playthrough. Hold that thought. Because, yeah, I, I actually have some interesting ideas for how I think that uh, this could be done. So stay tuned. Uh, Crazy, but as far as I know... So here... This is really interesting. So take take a look at the bottom left hand corner. R2 is sprint. R1 is dismount. Top uh, D pad button is scent. And bottom one is scour. And you have the command menu too. So you can probably still get into battles while on the backs of chocobos. Which is neat, and then the chocobos run away. Is there a chocobo hot and cold game? Is there a fucking Final Fantasy IX style mini game with the chocobos? Fucking seriously. Like, is there chocographs? Is there chocographs? I will lose my shit if we have chocographs again. Because Sentence Scour feels like you can actually, like, there's going to be a shitload of fucking be like, things to find in the world map. Sorry, I'm excited. This this really gets me fucking excited, man. Like, chocobos, you're right, yes. Four people on fucking chocobos. And you have... Like, it makes the world map faster. Beautiful. I love that kind of shit. I love getting around these big open areas faster. Give me any fucking way you can do it. Second thing. Like, the sentence scour? I, I, I really want to know, man. There, there's a mini game attached to this. You just fucking know it. Red 13 is totally running along. But I love that all of your party members are on Chocobo. Nice detail. Beautiful. Fucking love it. Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. Now, really quickly before we go on to this part, because I, 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 I wanna I want I have I could talk about this for an hour. One other thing that's notable, uh, when you're on the world map, you there is some parts of this video where it says, call Chocobo, which makes me think once you get a Chocobo, it's basically an access quick travel system whenever and you're out in the big open spaces and not in towns. You can just call your Chocobo whenever and ride it which i think is an amazing quality of life thing and if there is a mini game attached to it fuck yes fuck yes fuck yes good fucking game design let's go i think so Reseth. i think it's going to be wide areas because again people don't as people seem to misconstrue the idea you were fairly on rails for like two discs in Final Fantasy VII, the original one, right? Like, you still had to go through the Mithril Caves. Well, you had to go to the Chocobo Farm to get the Chocobo, to get past the Megarzolum into the Mithril Mines. Uh, you could skip Court Fondor and Yuffie, uh, and then you went to Junon. But there was no, there was nothing else. You could wander around, sure, as much as you wanted and battle, but it really wasn't like open world in the sense that games are open world nowadays. This is going to sound crazy. As far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. Oh my god, Cosmo Canyon, kill me now. I never thought we'd see this guy in this trailer this soon. Yes, you don't see his feet. I know, I know, chat. I want to know what the fuck he's floating on to. And yes, the Cor Fort Condor strategy game... Please make it return. It was absolutely the best in Integrate. Bring it the fuck back. Okay. Sorry. Um, 
I love this scene. I love the detail. I love that it is the planetarium. I love that it looks like we're going to get the whole spiel on the live stream again. Hook it to my veins. Like, I love this old dude. I love Grandpa. He's, I love Grandpa Planet. He's so cool. I love the lore. I love this complicated machine. I love that this fucking old dude is just floating. And, like, even, like, going back, they're, like, he's actually looking down on them because it's that perspective. This thing is huge. It's as cool as in the original, re like, in FF7 Remake, when you have the, uh, in the Shinra building, the uh, VR thing. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. The blood coursing through its planetary veins. The only thing, please, 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 please show us a, a tiny little person on that planet. The blood coursing through with show, show me a tiny little person on that planet, like right here, that grows up, dies, and then turns into a tree on the other side of the planet. Please show me that. I love that animation. Um, uh, Master Materia, uh, you're thinking like the huge Materia. Uh, you collect all the huge Materia, and then you get Bahamut Zero. Uh, that's probably gonna be in Part 3, but we'll see. I'm, I'm assuming that we get a Bahamut per game. We got regular Bahamut in the first one. We're gonna get, um, Bahamut Zero in this one. Or, sorry, Bahamut, uh, Neo Bahamut. Please, please, please let Neo Bahamut still exist. Please, 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 please. And then we're going to get uh, Bahamut Zero in the third game. Uh, that's my guess. Oh, Masters? Maybe. I don't know. That's going to be a wait and see kind of thing. Planetary veins. All right. This area, I've heard from a lot of different people. I've heard people say that it is the... Um, the City of the Ancients, which I'm going to say right now is categorically 100% false. I do not think that this is the City of the Ancients at all because of the metalwork and the design. This, to me, is either beneath Cosmo Canyon or it's the Mithril Mine. Uh, the crystal kind of looks a little bit like Mithril, sort of. Uh, I assume it's the Mithril Mine because nothing in this trailer seems to be past um, Cosmo Canyon. And even the Cosmo Canyon stuff is very minimum. So I don't think this is the GI cave uh, where you learn about Nanaki or Red 13. Whoops, spoiler. Um, but I, I am almost 100% certain that this is the Mithril Cave. Um, not going to stake my life on it, but just the way it looks, the design and everything, the metalwork feels more Shinra, uh, which makes me think that it's, um, yeah, it's the Mithril Cave, probably. Also, 928 meters till goal. Areas are pretty fucking big. They're connected to Sephiroth. Shadows of the Man. This... I'm not sure where this is. I assume this is outside Midgar still. I don't think it's Calm. Might be leading up towards Calm. It's uh, pretty drab. It might be closer to Junon, actually. That might be Junon in the background. Like the... the, the <clears throat> if you know your Final Fantasy VII lore... Uh, there's like the the cannon kind of thing. Um, I wonder if this pipe is like energy from Midgar towards Junon. Because I don't think Junon had a reactor. No, there was the underwater reactor. Never mind. I believe he called them. Sephiroth was in Midgar. One hundred percent the in in calm. Who 
node. So that's the crater. This, again, you see the same type of crystals as in the previous shot. Uh, I'm assuming that this is an expanded mithril cave. One, uh, I mean, this is just a new boss. This boss was never in the original. I mean, maybe it was a regular enemy, but um, I don't specifically remember it. Um, also, who was talking about what carries over? Who, who in chat was talking about what carries over? Because if you look, HP is down to 1,383. And MP is down to 33. I don't think anything carries over. I'm going to say this with a caveat, okay? Here's, here's my caveat. You ready? Here's my caveat. Maybe if you have a beaten save file from Final Fantasy VII Remake, you can access hard mode right from the beginning of Rebirth. And... And... You have access to all your stuff. That's the only thing I can think of. And you might actually be able to go to level 100. Normal mode in this game might be under the assumption that you are starting a fresh file. You don't have anything. And so you will play through the game from, I don't know, up to level 75 or 100, depending on how far they want us to go. Um... But I think maybe if you have a save file, you can start this game playing hard mode. Maybe. <clears throat> um, also, if you notice down here, so the limit gauge is the same. The MP is the same. The HP is the same. The ATBs are actually the same. It's still two ATBs. Um, but there's also these five little ticks down here. I've seen a lot of speculation. I don't think I've heard an official answer. But what I assume it is, I assume these five little ticks. God damn it. Get me. These five little ticks down here are for dual attacks. Um, for dual, like, when two characters team up sort of thing. I think that's what they are for. She may be new, but she's still a Turk. Elena looks fucking awesome. Could be for a promotional. It could be, but it, I I mean, I'm pretty certain since not everybody has played this game, uh, played the first game, that um, they'll probably make it accessible in some way that like normal mode starts you with nothing except a set bunch of things. Yeah, I think most people are like have already clued in. Like here you can see like a bunch of them are used sort of thing. Same idea for HP and MP though, which is curious. Elena looks fucking awesome. Looks cool. Look at that fucking airship! Seriously, man. Look at that airship. We're gonna... We get that airship eventually. There's the Junon cannon that is gonna blast a fucking giant hole in a weapon. And... Yeah, the high wind is up there, man. The high wind is up there. It's up there. Look at it. There it is. It's huge! <laughs> It's fucking huge, man. It's that ship is massive. I mean, it, I guess it always was, but never seemed that big. That's what she said. I love that the area around Junon is just completely dead. Oh, yeah, man. That's Sid's ship, right? Though, like, I like that this area look like it just. I love the sunset. It looks so good. I wonder if there's a day-night cycle, right? Because, like, here it's... I wonder if it's, like, set, uh, like, the first game. Or I wonder if they've added a day-night cycle to it. 
oh yeah, we're going to meet Sid. We're going to meet Kate Sith. We're going to meet Vincent. I, there, I, I think in all honesty, this game, I'm going to bet right now goes up to the weapons awakening. So you go all the way to the northern crater and you wake up the weapons. And that's where this game ends. Matter of fact, I'll go I'll I'll make a bet right now, chat. I think that the wep one of the weapons will be the final boss in this. I think you're gonna get all the characters this time. I think there will be a DLC, like a Vincent Integrate style DLC where you play as Vincent through like a shooter style segment. But I think that the final boss of this part is going to be one of the weapons. I don't know if it'll be Ultima or his Turk days. No, I, I think it, well, maybe, maybe could happen. Would be cool. But I, I absolutely think that the last thing we're going to do in this game is fight one of those weapons, and it's going to end on a cliffhanger. Um, I know that some people have said, like, City of the Ancients is the final part, and that that, that seems reasonable, too, and logical. I, I'm just hoping for a weapon, because the weapons are, like, one of the coolest thing ever. The diamond weapon, the ruby, the emerald are just some of the most iconic bosses in an RPG of all time to me, and I just have my fingers crossed. Red 13's playable. Woohoo! I mean, is there anything that needs to be said about dual tacks other than they're just fucking awesome looking? Well, my assumption is that the third disc is going to be greatly expanded. Um, I assume that the third game, I mean, is going to include Advent Children style stuff, Dirge of Cerberus stuff, um, and finish off the story once and for all. They won't like they've said that they're doing three games and that's it. And that kind of makes sense. With the rumors that Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy X are getting remade now, probably finishing up seven is a good thing to do and move on. I know it's Square Enix's cash cow, but it would be a really good idea for them to go do something else for a bit after they this. But yeah, if you went all the way up to the weapons, that's all the areas and everything in FF7 done, which means that the third and final game can be mostly about like the ending, the climactic ending, like finishing off everything, Kadaj, uh, Sephiroth, the uh, Sephiroth's alternate forms, the weapons, uh, all of the Dirge of Cerberus guys, like just do it once and for all, have everything and be done kind of thing like they want this to be the the like the 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 final hammer drops do it but i think that this one rebirth has to kind of be till the end and can i just say the title rebirth it's it's pretty clear i think who what rebirth is talking about to me anyway it's Sephiroth. It's Sephiroth's rebirth because Sephiroth is technically dead or, well, trapped. He's, he's trapped in, by the life stream, by crystallized life stream in the northern crater. He's technically actually just dead right now. And what we see are ghosts and illusions brought about by Genova cells in the experimented on humans by Hojo. I think that Rebirth, the title Rebirth, actually has to do more with uh, Sephiroth than anyone, which is an interest. I don't know. UP has Throw, Aerith has Ward Shift, Red 13 has Vengeance Mode. Those are all very good points. Yes. That thing is the FF7 devs 
said they're getting old, so they probably want to finish this at least. Yeah, before somebody dies, which is just the sad fact of getting older. That is 100% the boat. That is the boat going to Coastal del Sol. That is the engine room. I recognize it to a fucking T. So this is interesting because this is this is a Genova fight, right? Sailor Suit Barrett, yes. It, it'll be there. If they did cross-dressing cloud, there'll be Sailor Suit Barrett. Don't you worry. But... You could take over as director. Uh oh. You're young enough. I'm pretty young. I'm sure there'll be tons of quirkiness. I, I love this part with Yuffie freaking out. Because this will be. This is like Yuffie's first time seeing Sephiroth, right? This, is, this would be Yuffie's first time seeing Sephiroth. She also gets motion sickness. So, like, she's out of this fight. I, I like that. Well, remember, Yuffie gets motion sickness, so she's probably like, right now, right? And so she can't fight. <laughs> Yuffie cannot fight on a ship. Good to know. That too, that's a good point. Yeah, she could have some PTSD from Nero. That's a good one. <laughs> good, good voice acting. Second Genova fight. Uh, can you imagine how good the music's going to be? No, you can't, because it's going to be even better. Um, it's interesting. Genova's like already changing and shifting forms, like hanging from the ceiling this time, which is creepy as fuck. I, I love the work on, that they've done on Genova. Um, but I, I think this says that we're going to have genova fights in basically the sim similar places to where we were because this is yeah the hold of the ship we're fighting genova again um it's just that it genova transports us to this kind of weird universe purple hell universe the very depths of your soul that she can become those you hate those you fear those you love That's Cloud. And that's Nibelheim. You know that I killed her. So, who is she? Holy shit, it's a good time to be playing video games, you guys. And you know what? You know how people are like, well... We didn't get to see Sid in this trailer. We didn't get to see Kate Sith. We didn't get to see Vincent. Here's the plan, all right? Leading up to launch, we're going to go area by area until we get it. Next trailer, maybe Costa del Sol. Next trailer, Gold Saucer. Next trailer, Rocket Town. Next trailer, Nibelheim. That way you get a new character almost every single time. Uh, Costa del Sol might be combined. Uh, Costa del Sol will be combined with uh, Gold Saucer. Oh, there'll be more trailers. This is coming out in less than a year. We're going to get trailers fast and furious. Uh, we'll get one in September for certain for at TGS. There's no way we're going through TGS without getting a, a trailer. Um, Ojo basking in the sun. One can only hope it makes it into a trailer, man. Although, you know, it's also like you, I kind of don't want to see it. Le leave it for the game. Just leave it for the game. We're going to see Tifa in a bathing suit. or Tifa and Aerith going to bathing suit up? Costa del Sol ho uh, house? There's so much. There's so much. Chocobo. We haven't even talked about Chocobo racing. 
what mini games are going to be present in the gold saucer uh barrett's hometown um submarine no submarine would probably be the next disc but hmm, this this was di like say what you will about summer games fest this was a hell of a bomb to drop at the end good shit yeah, Yoshi P would be excellent. I, I hope they take lessons from how good Gold Saucer has been in Final Fantasy XIV. Although, technically, FF14 also owes, you know, a fair bit towards Seven for making it in the first place, right? Hope we get Ever Crisis Opsis to change outfits. That would be kind of cool. Uh, I don't... We'll, we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of potential. And right now, I'm excited, man. At the at the end of a really long, painful week where I'm tired and exhausted mentally and physically, I I'm so fucking excited. Um I'm I'm a Final Fantasy fan and I'm eating wonderfully. It's great. Ever Crisis, Final Fantasy 16, and Seven Re or Seven Rebirth. All of this and Final Fantasy IX Remake is basically confirmed. Tactics Remaster is basically confirmed. Final Fantasy X is now heavily rumored. And we haven't even talked about all the FF14 fantastic content that will be coming out between over the next few years. Like, it's just a great time, man. It's just an awesome fucking time. Oh, and of course, the pixel remasters for everybody who loves those. You know, it's it's good stuff right now. We are doing pretty well. So yeah, happy Umbra. I hope you guys are happy too. Uh, was there anything else really from today? I mean, obviously, I know we're a Final Fantasy channel. There's a lot of Final Fantasy stuff, but um, let me just get least not so easily is there any other trailers that are really cool Talos principle 2 sonic superstar this was a weird game Nate. sorry i need to balance the Nate. awesome with something weird Nate. Nate, buddy. Family meeting. Let's go. are you bringing food again? I, not right now talked about this not right now you are okay. literally killing him with these pizzas you just want to Look, it's a gamer. Oh, yeah, this game is going to be super frustrating. I mean, you, you know who made this game, right? You know what else they made, right? They make getting over it. Um, yeah, this game is absolutely going to be frustrating. Anyway, it, it's called.